Hi, my name is Brett, and this is episode 6 of Test Driven RSpec. In today's episode, we're going to cover refactoring what we have so that it is a bit more organized in the way that a normal app would be. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, the gist is that I created some routes that are for JSON APIs, and I created some routes that are actually serving up pages in a web app. And this is a bit confusing for me, and if other people work on this app, it would be confusing for them too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use test-driven development to refactor our routes and the existing code that powers those routes. Uh, first thing to do whenever starting any refactoring is to just see the state of your test suite. So I'll go ahead and I'll run the test suite for the app. There are eight examples and they all pass, so that's really good. And we'll just go ahead and start by refactoring the API routes that already exist. So in our spec features, if I go to, oh, not spec features, I meant spec requests. In spec requests, we'll start with our simple status spec. And let's go ahead and change the description so that it's more accurate to the route that's going to be requested. So I want to add this little API prefix to all the API routes so that it's clear to people within the app and you know people who would be potentially consuming this API that Anything within the API name space is uh, for the API, the external API. So I'll change that there. I'll change the get to slash API, save it. I'll go ahead and run just this test. That passes because it says no route matches get slash API slash status. So we have our first failing test and we can go ahead and just create a namespace called API, save that, run it again. And then we have here another issue with our action controller, uninitialized constant API. All right, if we go to our controllers and I go to that status controller, it's looking for a namespace of API that doesn't have one. The first step would be to just create our app controllers API directory. And then we'll move that existing controller, the status controller to app controllers API. Great, so if we go back to our Vim Explorer, go to API, go to status controller, now it's here. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we can just do API there. I don't know if the all caps API will work, but with test driven development, we'll see if that is acceptable. Let's see what happened. Unable to auto load the constant, expected this to define it. So it wants it to be lowercase like that. I think there's a way in Rails to change your settings so that you can do all capital constants like that for acronyms. So if you're interested in that, you can just search online. I'm sure you'll find it. I'm not going to look that up right now in the episode, but maybe I'll post in the description of the video or on the blog post how to do that. So there we go. We have that test passing, which is nice. So now that if we were to, let's say, start up the app, sorry about that, go to episode six and then rail server. If I were to curl localhost 3000 slash API, status, it returns that status OK JSON. So we can verify it's working, which we did in our test, but now we could also just do it right in the app. So there we go. There's one refactor, which is nice. We moved it to API, into the API namespace. And let's go ahead and move consoles. The reason why within the spec request directory, I'm not creating the API directory like I did with the controllers is because we are kind of assuming that in spec requests, it's it's the API that we're making requests against. So it feels kind of redundant to me, but you could also do that. It's really up to you. Same thing here. We're just gonna change the get requests to use the route that we want it to use. We'll run the test. It fails because we don't have the route. Go ahead and we just Pull that route down into the namespace. We'll run that again. 
same failure of uninitialized constants. So we're going to move the controller that is the console's controller to be in app controllers API. If I just go here in Vim and open up the new directory, the new status, um, the new console's controller in that new directory, add the namespace to the controller code. Go ahead and run that again. Now that passes. Let's run the whole test suite just to make sure that we didn't break anything else during these changes. Okay, we didn't, so that's good. Now let's see a couple other things. That covers most of that change for the API. And then I guess I'd say a nice change I'd like to make as part of this is the home spec. Instead of visiting slash home, I would like the user to instead go to just the slash route. And when they go to slash, they should show, it should show the home page. I'll go ahead and I'll run that test, that feature test. That fails because it says no route matches get forward slash. So we're going to use our root. And I think what happens here is that actually this becomes a root instead of get. Let's see. That fails. I think the syntax is a little different. Um, what is it? It's like root to home index. There we go. So that works. Now we have our root route, which is just slash, and that'll bring us to the home page. Uh, that test passes. So let's go ahead and run the whole test suite again. Make sure that all works. There we go. We now have an API namespace. We have a root route. All of our tests pass. And that's all working as we expect it. This is a pretty short episode because I just wanted to get the code base into a place where and if in the next episode I can actually test drive of adding an entire feature like user authentication and adding consoles through a form. So this is a little light of an episode, but I think it's a good good example of showing an application that already has tests and changing your routes around and making some small refactors. And as you can see, your test suite is this little bit of a safety net for you where you can be confident that the changes you're making aren't breaking anything else. And if they are breaking things, you know you have a better idea of what broke and you'll be able to fix it before you deploy your application. I'm just going to last just refresh the app, open it up locally, and make sure it's working. So now the home page is here. Click about, it goes here, right? We didn't have too much in this app, but that's what we had from previous episodes. And I'm just going to do API slash status and see what happens. Okay, it returns status okay. And then now if I do API slash consoles, uh, we don't have any actual consoles in our uh, development database. That's why that's an empty array. But let's say we did create one really quick just for the sake of doing that. If we open up the Rails console, and let's say I create a console with a create method, and we'll pass in, uh, I think I called it title. No, I think I called it name. We'll just call it switch. And that was manufacturer of Nintendo. Now if we do console.count, we'll see. We have one console. If I refresh here, now we have that console returning. So in a future episode two, we'll also load up our development database with some more data as well as the test database. That'll do it for episode six. This is a quick one. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you very much for watching.